It's Crystal with CrystalLaraSimpson.com. If this is the first time you have actually stumbled across my web um, blog page or on the YouTube video, welcome. If this is just that you're returning, welcome back. So today I'd like to share with you what God put on my heart to write on the blog this week. The title of the blog is actually called how can we hear god when he speaks you know god speaks to us but how can we hear him when there are so many other voices in our heads how can we listen to him when we are too busy there are so many things that compete with the voice of god in our lives like at any time we might hear the enemy trying to attempt to tempt us we might hear other people sharing their opinions, our own conscience, or things that we see and hear from TV and online. The messages that we hear from all of these different sources are best described as conflicting. So how can we hear God when he speaks and know for sure that it is his voice that we hear? In this post, we're going to discuss the things that you should and should not do to hear from God. So again, the title is, How Can We Hear God When He Speaks? First of all, two things we don't want to do. Here's number one. We don't wait until a crisis occurs to, to hear God speak. Understand that listening is a developed skill. It's developed through practice. So we don't want to wait until a crisis occurs to hear God speak. But unfortunately, the only time that some people pray is when they are going through a right now crisis. You know, I'm not saying that we don't pray during a crisis. Of course we do. But we need to pray when we are handling all types of situations, anytime. We should pray all the time and not just when we're handling difficult situations. See, if that's the only time that we pray, then we don't learn through experience how to hear from God. God may be trying to calm us, he may be trying to comfort us, and he, you just can't understand him because instead the enemy tricks you into thinking that he's not answering you. So, did you pray today? That's a good question. Now, second of all, don't be in such a hurry. The second thing we don't want to do is be in such a hurry when we communicate with God in prayer. We cannot merely tell God all of our problems, ask him to fix it, and then get up from prayer time. So let's use an analogy of a doctor. If you were ill, would you go to the doctor's office and tell him everything that's wrong with you, ask him to help you, and then get up and say, okay, thanks doc, and turn and leave? Of course not. You would wait to hear what the doctor says, right? Well, God is more than a physician, so don't be in such a hurry. Let's take the doctor analogy a little further. Would you tell the doctor how to fix your problems by suggesting the treatment and the medicine that he should prescribe? Could you see yourself getting mad at the doctor if he thinks that there might be a better way? Well, many Christians treat God this way. They pray but really are just telling God the problem and what they believe is the solution. And then they wait for God to do exactly what they've said. Well, sometimes God in his wisdom works the situation out in a different way. If we cannot hear that this was the answer to our prayer, the enemy may convince us that God didn't answer. So now that we have an idea of what we shouldn't do, you know, we shouldn't um, be in such a hurry and we also should not wait until a crisis occurs. Let's look at what we should do. First of all, we need to pray correctly. Second of all, we need to listen expectantly. And third, don't fear. So looking at pray correctly, we must pray correctly. In a previous post, I wrote about how to pray as Jesus taught. But some of that information is really important here. You know, when we pray using the Lord's Prayer as our guide, there's really four parts of that prayer that we need to remember. And to help you remember, those parts of the prayer actually spell the word pray. So first of all, we need to remember to praise God. That's the P. We need to repent. That's the R. We need to ask God for what we need, and we need to yield to God. 
And again, those spell the word pray. So think about the Lord's Prayer when he says, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. That is the praise part. And so whenever we come to God, we need to praise him for who he is, recognizing him that he is our Father, you know, thanking him even for all the things he's already done for us and all of our blessings. Second of all, we need to repent. In the Lord's Prayer, Jesus said, Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And so we have to be sure that we repent and we ask God to forgive us of anything that we might have done, said, or even thought that might not be right. And then we ask God for what we want or what we need and what we are coming to him in prayer about. Um, in the Lord's Prayer, that's the part that says, give us this day our daily bread and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. You know, we ask God for all types of things like, you know, our, our daily provision, our wisdom, healing, deliverance. We have to pray for whatever we need and we have to pray for others. And lastly, this part often gets forgotten and that is yield, the why. You know, at the end of the Lord's Prayer, it says, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. This is where you are surrendering to God and you're surrendering to his plan and his will. And you're saying, God, whatever you want to do, I'm surrendering. I'm yielding to your will and not mine. And that should be at the end of every prayer. And so lastly, we all always say in Jesus name, amen. That's how you pray correctly. When we pray, if we use this outline given to us by Jesus, we honor God with obedience and reverence. As a parent, if our children, who of course are old enough maybe to know better, if they came to us demanding that we fix their problems or asking us for this, that, and the other thing, and they didn't even bother to say hello, we would really consider that disrespectful. So therefore, we want to come to God reverently, praising him as our father, repenting and asking for what we need and yielding and allowing him to work as he sees best. Second, we need to listen expectantly. After you have asked God for help, the next step is to listen. Listening requires us to stop talking. It's not always easy and to be patiently and, and carefully listening which is why we need to practice this skill daily. When we look for God to speak, we actually shut our mouths, but we need to open our hearts. And often we hear God when he speaks, we'll hear scriptures, we'll hear words of reassurance, comfort, and love. You know, you think about how many times in the New Testament, Jesus said, he that hath ears to hear, let him hear. Jesus also said that his sheep know his voice in John 10, 27. The red writing in the Bible lets us know what Jesus would and would not say. As we get better acquainted with the Bible, we are better able to distinguish the voice of God. We can learn by going to church and studying the Bible. And as we understand what is and isn't in the Bible, we will grow more familiar with the voice of God. The Holy Spirit will also remind us of scriptures, but he can't remind us of anything that we haven't first started learning. The Bible says, but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I said unto you. That was John 14, 27, King James Version. So again, you have to put it in so that the Holy Spirit can remind you of it. Now, lastly, don't fear. After you have prayed ask, and you ask God to help, you have to take the time to listen for his voice and then patiently wait and don't fear. If you have given God permission to intervene in the way that he sees best, expect him to do just that and don't become fearful. God knows how to help you hear him. So countless stories, of course, in the Bible will tell us that God knows how to get our attention. If there's a strong message that he wants to get to us, he will find a way to communicate. 
In the Bible, God spoke through a burning bush, a jaw from an animal, visits some angels, and even temporary blindness to get others' attention. He's still able to do that now. And so the Bible is clear that God will never forsake us. Psalms 37, 35. He knows how to give good gifts to his children. He's a good provider and he will never let you go without whatever you need. We have to trust him. This is one of my favorite scriptures. It says, for everyone that asketh, receiveth, and he that seeketh, findeth. And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. If a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he for a fish give him a serpent? Or if he shall ask an egg? Will he offer him a scorpion? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask? God knows how to take care of his children, just like you would take care of your children, but God infinitely more knows how to take care of us. That comes from Luke 11, verse 10 through 13, King James Version. So every time I write a blog post, I really like to send, say a prayer. And this prayer that was written on the blog this week is a prayer to hear God more clearly. As we grow in God, we will silence the unproductive chatter in our mind. And we learn how to hear and know God's will. As we make it through each test and trial, our faith grows. And we learn that God is listening. And he is always working things out for his children. So let's pray right now. Again, a prayer to hear God more clearly. Heavenly Father, I bow my head and my heart before you. I praise you for your eternal love and goodness. You are patient and your mercy is everlasting. I know that I make mistakes as I try to live for you. And yet you lovingly show me where i need to grow thank you for extending forgiveness when i ask god i am sorry that my prayer life has sometimes been one-sided please forgive me for not listening intently i confess that i need to do better and i ask you to help me god i come to you with prayer requests for myself my family and my friends i ask you to keep everyone safe and healthy as I quiet my mind now, teach me to hear your voice. Sometimes I let the hustle and bustle of life or the noise of the enemy take my attention away from you and your word. I pray that you help me to hear you more clearly. When I hear you speak, I'm comforted and lifted. Speak, Lord. I open my heart to only you. Like a sheep, I need my shepherd. As I study your word today, let your words feed me, calm me, and shed light on my path. I surrender to your will. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I hope this blog post was a blessing to you. If you are watching this video right now on the web uh, website, go ahead and let me know that you like this type of con content by subscribing to be able to get the post each time I write one. If you're actually looking at it on the YouTube video, again, pop over to crystallarsimpson.com and subscribe there so that I know that you're there. Also, comment, like, and subscribe hit the bell button and help grow my YouTube uh, channel so that others can also hear the word. I pray that it is a blessing. You know, I only want to be an encouragement and a blessing to others. God is so good and so worthy. I pray that you were blessed. I pray that something I said today lifted your spirit and I pray that you stay healthy and safe and joyful in Jesus name.